a poison called criminology, Professor K. Jichinka, PhD. This presentation dwells on a topic a poison called criminology, a discussion on the discipline of criminology and how it turns into a poison for people professing this discipline. At the outset, we need to take a look at who is a criminologist. A criminologist for the purpose of this discussion is anyone who professes criminology, who fights crime and who works for the victims of crime. And they study crime and criminal behavior every day in order to protect the society from the ill effects of crime. If crime is a disease, then those curing it will be the social doctors and a criminologist is the social doctor that will cure this disease. The problem is the doctor becoming a patient here. Samaramantan, Lord Shiva, Kalahu Wish, Poison, and Criminologists. The famous story of Samaramantan, churning of the ocean, a major event in Hinduism, Vedic philosophy, which explains the origin of Amrita aka the nectar of eternal life and Kalahu Wish aka the lethal poison capable of destroying all of creation. The poison was so lethal that it threatened to not only contaminate the nectar, but destroy all of creation. It was Lord Shiva who finally came to the rescue and consumed the poison himself in order to protect the universe. I would compare all criminologists to Lord Shiva that take poison, crime events slash news, on a daily basis and there is no poverty to stop the poison that goes inside them continuously. This is because a criminologist gradually consumes more and more poison each day. The poison, that is the study of crime and over time, criminologists tend to drown themselves in their discipline. The study of crime and criminal behavior can be harmful because of its negativity that it espouses. Hence, the principle stands, everything in moderation, as they say and if Marie Curie can die of exposure of radiation in inside the laboratory. A criminologist can also die inside the social laboratory due to a large amount of exposure to crime events slash news. 2. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde Criminologists If evil will only win then those fighting evil should not turn to evil, but it reiterate that evil has a tendency to overpower our minds and dominate us. It feeds off of one's hope enthusiasm and positivity until one is left nothing but a shell of their past selves. Likewise, a criminologist must understand that at first, they may enjoy their free fall in the field of criminology. But the deeper they go the more they will realize that an abyss is never ending and I call this as emotional abyss. It has the power to swallow them as whole and turn them into a monster itself. And thus, we need to first cure such monsters in the field of criminology who have become victim themselves of crime, event slash news, passively. The impact of a criminologist's victimization is physical, financial and most importantly, psychological. The positivity and enthusiasm with which they entered the field must be rekindled in order to keep a criminologist away from this abyss, that is the study of crime. 3. Abhimanyu, Chakru, Labyrinth, and Criminologists A criminologist must know of their limitations. Like Abhimanyu in Mahabharata, who went in inside the Chakru, criminologists also did not know to how to get out. It is imperative to be aware of how to get out of this chakru criminology, and if a criminologist is not aware of how to get out of the chakru criminology, he slash she will succumb inside and it will be a horror eerie. In my years of experience, I have identified certain methodologies which can be used by criminologists to unwind and de-stress themselves. It is a way to encourage criminologists to engage with the outside world and indulge in activities related to fields other than criminology. Music therapy, dance therapy, trekking, going for long rides, travel therapy, reading positive motivational books, 
spending time with friends from fields other than criminology etc will be helpful. And lastly, criminologists should avoid smoking and drinking alcohol for a thorough detoxification of their mind. A criminologist who consumes the poison of crime, event slash news, daily may end up closing the doors of happiness brain chemicals, viz. dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin and endorphins. Hence, criminologists must engage in activities that reopen the doors to these happiness chemicals. Doing self-care activities, eating good food and celebrating the little wins to increase dopamine levels. Hugging, holding hands and playing with animals to increase their oxytocin levels. Meditation, jogging, swimming and cycling to increase their serotonin levels, and lastly volunteering, serving and laughing to increase their endorphin levels. Last but not the least. Criminologists must not forget to appreciate the little things, be mindful of their surroundings. And be careful to not hurt people around them because of their monstrous behavior, and always remember the value of gratitude. Thanks, Professor K. Jijinka, Principal Director, International Institute of Justice and Police Sciences, Bengaluru, Karnataka, A.A., India. HTTPS colon slash slash www.xinstitute.org